Welcome to Virtualize Everything, where we strive to educate and inform about virtualization. Tonight's video presentation is one we've done before, but it's been a long time and I'm looking to update it. We're also going to add some viewer requested content and not stop the video at how to set it up. But we're also then going to go on to adding it to the Proxmox server, how to use it to store containers and VMs, how to store backups, and how to store ISO images and templates. Now, tonight we're going to do this whole thing on Proxmox in one server. It's probably not suggested that you do this in the server. There's much more efficient ways to do it, and you don't really need to push the traffic over your network in order to do this. But with that said, we're going to do this for ease so that you can learn how to do all parts of it, whether you have a NAS that's on a separate appliance, or you're creating a NAS on your Proxmox server, and maybe running a different Proxmox server somewhere else in your house for other experiments, and want to have all the images stored on it. So with that, Let's get to our video the presentation. The thing I feel we need to cover is why we want to use Samba in an LXC and not a NAS operating system like TrueNAS, OpenMediaVault, or Exponology. Sorry, the spelling might be incorrect. But the fact of the matter is, is a lot of us with entry-level Proxmox servers don't have the resources available to us to run some of these operating systems. We choose to use those resources for other VMs, like running a Home Assistant or maybe PFSense. And with our smaller four-core systems, we just don't have the overhead to virtualize an operating system, or we don't have enough RAM to run something like TrueNAS and pass through drives and run ZFS. So it mitigates a lot of the available options for backup and redundancy. So with that, let's look at how a container versus VM structures its resources real quick. So here you can see on the right that we have a container layout. So you notice we have a host operating system, which in our case is going to be Proxmo. Then you have your supporting files. That's actually your template image. And then you have your app built on that. And there's a lot of resources available to your app. Versus if you were to run VMs, where you had a host operating system, then your hypervisor, which still is Proxmox, but we run QMEU instead of LXC in our Proxmox case. Then you have to assign all the resources, hard drive, space, uh, VM, CPU, RAM, and such to your guest operating system. Now those are taken up and they're unavailable to anything else, where in a container, they're available to be shared from container to container. Now there are in Proxmox certain scenarios where VMs can share resources, but they're much more limited. Now one advantage to a VM in a cluster scenario where you may want to run a VM is that a VM can be passed back and forth much faster without shutting down. With that being said, in a lot of cases your storage appliance is not an appliance that you can do that with. Either you're using your storage appliance to store your containers in so they can fastly be migrated, or you don't have the available resources on your other system to store them. So they can't be migrated quickly. So that's another thing to consider. A container allows you to use lightweight resources with the detriment of migration. So, but if you can't migrate, that might just work for you. All right, so let's get on to now how to set up and install Samba inside of our container. So we're here at the Proxmox web interface. And the first thing we're going to do is log in. Now that we've logged in, we need to make sure that we have a template for the container. To do that, we're going to go to local and we're going to go to CT templates. Now you can see I have the template here, but if we didn't have the templates, we'd click template, we'd select the template and then press download. I'm not going to download our template today because, well, I already have the template. So now that we have the template, we're going to go up here to the top right and hit create CT. Here we need to give it a host name fill out a password. We're going to use unprivileged, which is already checked. So we hit next. We select our location or our storage location. Now you want to pay attention to this because this is going to be key for later on when we actually want to use our storage that we add to our Proxmox server. Then we're going to select our image. And if you didn't catch that, we're using Ubuntu 22.04. Then we're going to select our storage location again. In our case, we're going to use our storage drive. So this is where the container and all the data 
housed inside of the container in the way that we're setting it up right now will be stored. We click next, we're gonna give it one CPU, and then we're gonna click next, and we're gonna give it 512 megs of RAM. Now, for this, it should work fine, but you may wanna add more depending on your workloads. Next, we're gonna choose DHCP today. I'm doing that to make it easier. Know that you can enter a static IP address right here and a gateway. We also can configure our bridges right here if we want. I am going to put this on a segment of my network that I use for containers and VMs. So I am selecting the needed network. I hit next, next. If everything looks as you want, press finish. Now that we see task OK, everything is finished and we can close out. And you notice our container here has been created and added under our node. Now in my case, I have a few nodes because I have a cluster running. But if you don't have a cluster, don't worry. It'll still show up and you'll still be able to do this project. So I'll return in a minute and we'll begin setting up and installing All Samba. right, so let's start looking at the process needed to install Samba. We created the container moments ago, and now we've opened the console view of the container, and we're here and ready to log in. So the first thing we need to do is log in. If you've never logged into a container before, you use root and the password that's set up during the container configuration process. Now, the first thing we need to do whenever we start a new container, or basically whenever we do a new software install is to update the repositories. So we're getting the latest version of the software and the latest links to the software available. APT update will update that repository. So as you can see here, we have 58 packages that need to be upgraded. Let's go ahead and take a moment and do that. APT upgrade-y will upgrade these packages and get our container fully up to date and ready to use for this project. All right, so now that we've done the updates and the upgrades to the repository and software in this container, it's time to actually install Samba. To do this, we're going to use the command apt install Samba, and we're going to put a dash y at the end of it so we can answer yes. Now that Samba is installed, it's time to begin the configuration process. To do this, we're going to use Nano. You can use Vim if you like, but this tutorial will tell you how to use Nano. So we're going to use Nano slash etc slash samba slash smb dot conf. And this gets us to the configuration file. Now for this basic implementation of Samba, we're just going to scroll all the way to the bottom. Now note, this is the most basic implementation of Samba and the one that most tutorials on the internet use. So we're choosing to use this today because it's the most beginner friendly. But I do want to note to you that this is also the least secure implementation of Samba. So now that we're at the bottom of the configuration page, we're going to type in brackets, the name of the share, which we're calling Samba share today. And then we're going to add three spaces and we can comment Samba share on Ubuntu or whatever. Notice this is copied directly from the Ubuntu tutorial. Then our path to where we want to store our files, and we can edit this for ourselves here, and we'll put it in the home directory of a user called test that we've yet to create. Read only is set to no, so we can write to this file, and it is browser. So now we can press Control X and Y to save, and we need to set up the user test. To do that, we're gonna use the command add user, and we're gonna add test. Now we'll give it a password. So we have a user test. So if we were to ls, there's a file. It's not displaying as no file. So we have some place for the share to work. So now we need to reboot Samba so that it, the changes take effect. Service SMBD restart. And now we should have a working Samba server. I'll be back in a minute to show you how to use this on the Proxmox web interface and how to store different items using Proxmox before we move on to adding this Samba server to the Proxmox. We also need to create a Samba password. Now the Samba password is a little bit different from the password that we created for the user, and we have to use a different command to do that. So the password command today to create a Samba password that we're going to use is smb passwd dash a and then the username. 
In our case, it's test. Now we can enter the password that we desire to use. Right. And welcome back to the Proxmox tutorial on adding the Samba server to your Proxmox setup. So we've created the Samba server or SMB share or however you want to refer to it. And now it's time to add it into our Samba server. Now, as I've repeated many times before, it's not suggested to add the share to the same server that you're sharing it on. It's kind of network traffic induced and really not a good idea. But here we have another Samba server, or rather another Proxmox server that we virtualized from the cluster that we originally set up our share on. Here's our share right here. I just went ahead and virtualized this for the demo for the video. This is also not suggested, but it works great for showing things without actually messing up my cluster itself. All right, so here's the virtualized Proxmox environment. And in order to add the SMB share, we're gonna select data center and you see that already in blue as you can't see my mouse. So where was that PVE or our node? This is what it would look like. And here's the summary on our node. We're going to select data center. And this is how your summary initially looks for your data center if you have no configuration done. All right. So then we come down to storage. So now you notice storage is blue. And we click add and we go to the SMB slash CIFS tab. And we're going to give it an ID. Our server is going to be the IP address. In our case, it's 192. 68322. Our username we set up was test and we enter our password. Now we should see our Samba share appear and then we can go here and by default disk images are checked. We're going to cover where to store ISOs, container templates, backup files, and containers in this video. So I'm going to check and highlight all of them as blue. Now we can hit add and you notice the video mount for the SMB appears here and video appears over here and the sizes look semi-correct. Okay, so that's all it is needed to add a Samba share or SMB mount on your Proxmox server. Coming up next, I'm going to show you how to back up, create a VM that stores on it, create a container that stores on it, and how to store ISO images and templates on your Samba share. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay, so it's been a few minutes my time. It's only been a couple of seconds your time, but we're here now at the Ubuntu download page and I've navigated through to the final download page. What we want to do here is where it says download now, which you see an underline appearing and disappearing at, we're going to right click. From that right click, we're going to select copy link. Now, if you're on Linux or a Windows machine, your terminology may differ a bit. But what you want to do is copy the URL address to the file that you're downloading. Then we're going to come here under video and we're going to go to ISO images. And then we're going to select download from URL and we're going to paste our URL in. Now we'll query the URL, which will give us the file name that Canautilus or a bunch to intends on you using for the file. Now the last step that I like to do, but you don't have to do, is to check this advanced button here and then our hash we can set to 256 and we can come up over here and where you see the underline appearing, uh, verify your download, click on that and we can actually select this string of numbers and letters here and we can copy that and come over here and paste it in at checksum. Now this will actually do your hash for you immediately after the ISO is directly downloaded to your newly configured SMB or Samba share. So we can hit download and this will take a few minutes. So now that we're finished downloading our program, let's take a look and see where it is at on our new Samba share. So let's close it and you can see that it appears right here under ISOs. Now we're not going to go through the full process of installing the VM as that would be extremely lengthy. But let's create a VM using both the Samba share to store the raw file or disk image that the VM will run from and use this image or ISO image that we downloaded to the SMB share. So to do that we're going to come up here 
to the upper right hand side of the screen where the box is changing colors right now. We're going to click create VM. We'll give it a name next. So at this point, this is where we see storage here where the drop down window appears. Now, local, of course, is your local drives. Video is going to be your new SMB share. So we can select video. Now you can see under the ISO drop down our freshly downloaded Ubuntu image. So then we can go through through system configuration. And here at disks, this is where we make the selections to use our SMB share as our storage drive. Again, it's titled storage, and the drop down, we just select our SMB share. And then we can go through our process like we normally would, and our container is created, or rather a VM in this scenario, using our SMB stored ISO image and our SMB location for its drive. Now, you can miss and match this. You don't don't have to have your ISO image stored on the same drive as you would your raw or your data image for the VM. You could have one on local and one on your SMB share. All right, so now let's take a look at getting a container template the same way we did for getting our ISO image. But this is actually a little more straightforward. So we can click container image here with video selected, and now we click templates. At the templates window, we can actually directly download any of the templates that are viewing here. So in our case, we could do a search for Ubuntu, and we see that we have 22.04, and we press that. It says task OK. Our container image has been downloaded. We can close the window, and we see our container image has appeared right here. So to use this container image on our SMB share, we go up to create CT where the icon is changing colors and we fill out the fields. And here at templates, storage location is again selected as our SMB share and we can see our template. Now, if this was local and I did this drop down, see the template doesn't appear. That's because it's on the SMB storage drive. And we do the same for disks, selecting the share under storage. So our container is done being created and you can see the container right here. Notice the icon is a little bit different next to 101 than it is 100. And that's because one's a VM and one's a container. So let's take a look at this container and the process is gonna be very similar for the VM, and we'll probably take a look at that here in a second, but how to back it up. So you select the container, so it's highlighted, then you go to backup, and you can press backup now. And again, to back up to the share drive, we're just going to go ahead and select the shared drive, and then we can press backup, and the process begins. All right, so now that we've done the backup of the container, let's take a look at how to back up a VM. The process is very similar, where you select the VM, you go ahead and select backup, press backup now, and you select the location of where you want to back up and press back up. Now I'm getting an error because of the fact that I'm virtualized here, but that is a good demonstration of the process of how to back up. And on your system, it should work so in just the middle fine. of this video, I showed you the bare minimum needed to add users and set up a configuration file inside of your Samba server so you could share. But let's take a little bit of a minute to look at some more advanced stuff. So we're back at our server's command line. And if we were to run an ls-home, we can see that we have one user home file called test. And by running an ls dash L with a forward slash home and test, we can see that we have the files that were created for the Proxmox backups and templates and ISO images here. And we can begin to see the, the permissions. So it's a directory with read, write, execute for user, read and execute for groups, and read and execute for others. Now this could be a problem if we want multiple users to access this file, because it's basically meant that only the user test can write files to this folder. So there's some things we could do to fix that. The first one is extremely common for people to do, and it's basically the intended way for the basic tutorial tutorials that are written by places like Canonical to do it. And you run a chmod777 on home slash test. Now when we do that and we view this permissions, that should have changed read write execute for all. 
Oh, I know why. We needed to add a dash R to this. And then we get read, write, execute for all of the directories here. But this can be somewhat problematic if we have multiple users on here and we have places we don't want users to go. So something we can do here is we can actually use the command add user and then we could go test but then we could put another comment after that for a group. So we can add the group test to add to the user test which is what happened here. We could do the same for sudo by typing sudo after that and that's very common on a lot of tutorials to give a user pseudo privileges. So the other thing that we could look at doing if we wanted to is actually assigning the uh, user group or a group. So if we made another group and we called it VE, or in this case, we don't have a group called VE. Uh, I think this is command. And then we assign test to the user group VE. We could actually change the permissions here will allow VE. And we can do that by running the command ch own. And we can again run this on all files. And we'll call this test. Then we're going to put a colon. And we're going to call this VE. And go home test. So now when we view the permissions, you can see that all users of the group VE are able to have read, write, execute to this file. Furthermore, if you don't want a user like test to be able to log in like they could now if we hit exit and I could actually log in command line with the user test. Now, this is all right, and but we have a couple of ways to fix this. So the first part of the process of fixing this is actually something that we can do here in the container by running the command passwd-l and test. This removes the password from test, essentially making it impossible to log in. So if I was to exit now and enter the username of test and the password we used before, you can see we're no longer able to log in. The next thing we can do is actually to configure Proxmox's firewall for this container so SSH is not accessible. As we've already disabled the username, this isn't as important. But remember, the root user, if not disabled, could still log in through SSH. So something good is to block port 22. I'll be back in a few seconds with how to set that up using Proxmox's firewall. Okay, so we're back here at the Proxmox web interface, and we've selected our container that we made here called Video Storage by clicking on it, and you can notice that highlights it in blue. We we can go to firewall. Well, first we'll go to options and we can turn the firewall on by highlighting firewall, hitting edit, and checking that. Then we can go to firewall here and you can see I've actually put some rules in here to accept all traffic. That was for a little bit of a different tutorial that we just did. But if we wanted to block SSH, we can put some rules in front of it. So if we hit add and we put incoming traffic and we dropped and then we hit the source or the destination port of 22 on TCP and we have to create a rule for UDP as well and we pressed add and then we can highlight the rule, go copy, we're going to drop traffic but this time we're going to drop it for UDP. This will stop SSH from working on our container. And we now have added a little bit of security so users can't log into this container with SSH. And by disabling the passwords, they can no longer log in. Well, with that, this is going to end this presentation. I hope you all had a good night and you've learned something from it. And I'll see you again with the next tutorial.